morning. Do I have sunscreen all over my face? Hopefully. <laughs> so, uh, kind of a hodgepodge video, but we are going to be doing... <sighs> We're finally going to swallow the big pill and have the backyard rototill because I'll explain why we've had so much failures back there in a minute. If you've been following my channel, you know. But uh, we've had a lot of work done here over the past few weeks. So this has sort of been my nightmare because when we bought this property, this whole area sloped sort of towards the house and all the water was running towards the house. So what I did was I built up this middle section and we have this slope this way and the other side sloped away from the house. And then we're gonna be installing runoffs down here. But um, I had some soil delivered. So I wanted topsoil, but he said the topsoil didn't look good. He said, but I've got organic garden soil. So I said, well, bring that out. Big mistake. The organic garden soil, and I'm gonna caution you on this, was like 60, 70% wood chips. And I was like, man, so I dug this in with a skid steer. We even came back a second time and seeded this and we scarified it in doesn't matter and here's what happens so when you have clay soil clay soils have silicates inside of it and those are like platelets and when they get wet that's why you get so much runoff it's hard it's very hard for water to penetrate so when it gets wet you get this real slippery soil you can't even walk on it well when you put this woody soil on top of it here you know what's going to happen it's going to it's basically going to just float off and sure enough because we have it look at this washout so you can see this washout that we have here and if believe it or not this whole area was solid green with germinating grass it was solid green <laughs> and guess what now nothing I mean, it's just sort of like it sliced it all off and killed it. So we're going to do this the right way. Today, I talked to David, uh, my guy that does my fields. He has a rototiller attachment for his John Deere. We're going to come in here and we're going to till this. And I'm going to have him try and till it at least four to six inches deep, open it up and get it in. So that's really what has to happen here for we're not planting a yard, by the way. I want to make this clear. This is not a yard. We're just trying to get roots in the ground to hold this soil in place right now. We will come back in the spring and we will install a new yard because what I'm going to do is we're gonna put a nice fence all the way around this back area, back behind that magnolia, and then it's gonna come up right about in here and then go into the house. Uh, I've already got a quote on that. It's a four foot uh, farm fence, cute farm fence with wood caps on it, and then we'll do uh, four by two black wire and the girls will have a nice area now one other interesting note so sitting right here is a huge new thousand gallon septic tank well with all this rain we've been having guess what the water has found a way to get into that septic system and drawn down so I don't know if you can see the crater or not let me get it from a different angle I don't know if you can see the crater or not, but there is literally a crater here, right in here, it's a crater. <laughs> and Ryan was like, dude, don't stand on that. And I'm like, it's not, there's nothing open. It's just that the water has gone down into that septic system and is going into the leach field out here. Um, and it's just, it's just taking the dirt down with it. So I gotta have David fill this area in. And then we're gonna rototill this. Man, it's just sad, but. You got to do it. So I saw these yesterday and I figured I'd show them to you. So here's the back of the house. And we were looking up and we said, dude, look at those mushrooms. <laughs> look at this thing. Look how big that is. Good Lord. And it's one of these. Is it a puffer? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. Look at the size of that thing. But look at them in here. Aren't these crazy? That's crazy. I walked my butt off through here and basically scattered a tall fescue mix all through here. This whole area, I just broadcast it. And a lot of it, because of all the rain we've had, it's all, it's all starting to sprout up. See it? See it sprouting up all in here? Because my goal, my goal is to turn this into a soft green field and not weeds and brush. 
So I want to be able to come in here and cut this with like a bush hog attachment, you know, maybe to six or eight inches and just have a nice soft green field in here. I mean, you got a big, beautiful pecan tree that's actually recovering. It actually died off. It dropped all of its leaves this year, but that pecan tree is gorgeous. So you got that big pecan tree, you got the old barn up there, and then you have a nice soft green field, which you couldn't even see when we bought this property. But it's interesting that, you know, if I can turn this into clover and fescue, this would be a really cool little, nice soft entryway up there. All right, so uh, David's here with the John Deere. He's got his rototiller. Basically, we're just going to leave this alone. Um, I'm just going to leave this alone. We're going to come out. I don't think we'll have to do any reshaping on this, but I'll just come out. We're going to reseed this and then we're going to roll it. I actually got a new roller just for this project. And I'm going to hook it up to the UTV, I think, and I'm going to roll the seed in afterwards. tiller is actually designed for this. It's actually designed for landscaping work. It will actually till and level it off really nicely. It does a great job. about the soil being too wet and then it would just clump up, but we got lucky. We didn't get a whole bunch of rain yesterday, so it actually turned out pretty nice. It's tilling up real nice. So David had a good idea. Instead of us shoveling all this dirt trying to get it level, he said, let me just put the rototiller on it, straddle it. This trench area here was basically creating a block for the water. So now we can actually come in and we can actually rake this if we want. Probably just, I'll probably just roll that. I got a roller, we'll probably roll that. And then he's gonna come in and just drag this driveway because this guy that did this left huge ruts in here. So he's going to smooth that out. He's a thinking man. I'm glad he's here. This is done though. This looks great. And I told David, I said, man, if you imagine if we rented a rototiller, we've been here for two days doing this crap. I mean, he's got it done in 20 minutes. So if you know someone that's got a tractor and has that. Rake and let's just any of the ruts just break out. 
All right, so we are finally done. I am draining my roller. I learned the hard way. <laughs> you have to drain these things and never fill it with sand. Always use water because after you empty it, you need to stand it up on end. Don't let it sit like this because you'll get a flat edge. I've got a sand roller at home that has a completely flat edge. God almighty. So this is what we should have done in the first place. So we have David came out here and rototilled this a good three to five inches, mixed up all that soil. Um, I put seed out. Then we went ahead and we rolled it. I put more seed out. Then we raked it and now it's all set. I've got a crap load of seed. Uh, you're probably gonna ask what I'm putting down. I got the Scott's Shady Mix, which is a mix of Kentucky, a little bit of Kentucky Blue Hybrid and Tall Fescue. And then I actually bought some Common Bermuda. Common Bermuda, the cheap Scott's Bermuda. Because I think the Common Bermuda will do better out here than that fine. I have got Bermuda all over my fields up there. I mean, it's all over. So that's why I bought the common. I think it'll do well in here. It's not gonna get a whole lot of sun, but at least it'll sprout and hold the ground. So here we go. Third time's a charm. <laughs> Good Lord. So these fields over here, these back two fields did fine. This upper field, we had a huge problem with horse nettle up here, Carolina horse nettle, and the whole field basically turned into it. And so we had to spray it almost three times. So the problem, I think what happened was, um, I actually had to go, instead of just using uh, glyphosate, I had to actually put in some diquat as well too. And I think that diquat is not breaking down in this soil fast enough. So when we plant, <laughs> it comes up and it actually turns purple and white and basically dies off. So see this right here? See how it turns purple and white? So I had to grab my cultivator and I'm turning this up here just to try and get that soil to sort of work those chemicals out. And I think that's what it is. I went ahead and grabbed some soil up here to do a soil test just to make sure yesterday. But here's my funny story. So we came in here, I came in here. <laughs> I was by myself on, on a Sunday. And what I did was I ran that cultivator, it's sitting right over there. I ran that cultivator and just basically re, re tilled this whole field up here. And I came out here, I had some snow peas. And so I just scattered snow peas along with some clover and some other stuff all over here. Well, guess what? There wasn't a single deer track on this field when I left because it was all turned from that cultivator. When I came back the next day, it looked like a thousand deer spent all night in here. There were deer tracks and even Ryan and John came out here and they're like, holy cow, there were deer tracks on every square inch of this place. And I'm not talking, oh, a couple deer came in here or there. No, I'm talking about the entire field. Every square inch of this field had deer tracks on it. <laughs> and they came through. <laughs> and those little bastards came through because I didn't run back over the snow peas because we were going to have rain. I figured it'd be fine. They came in and ate every single snow pea I put out. It was like 10 pounds of snow peas that I scattered broadcast over here. Every single one of them. I mean, I couldn't find one of them. So yesterday, it was, it was insane. Yesterday I came out here and with John and I went ahead and I put in, so there's the, if you don't know what I'm talking about, that's a cultivator. It just has like, just has like prongs on it. And I ran one, two, three, four, five strips. I ran five strips, new strips in here. I put down more snow peas on each strip and then had him hand rake those snow peas to cover them up. <laughs> Good Lord, man. I'll tell you what, it's just insane. 
So I call this place the Rack Ranch, and there's a reason for it. We just have tons of deer the way that this is set up. We've got these upper fields that we're actually planting for the deer. We've got feeders out here for the deer. We've got a pond out here, and then we've got all these thick woods back in here. So I've got a big open cattle field on that side of me. And then on the other side of the property, there's a couple res, there's two houses over there and that's it. So, but this is the, this is so thick and wooded back in here in our back 20 that that's where they all hang out. Let me put up a picture. I have five, at least eight point bucks standing in that field, shoulder to shoulder. Once it was planted, there's a little baby in front of it. It was just, it's insane. So we call it the rack ranch because we have so many bucks in here. The biggest deer, now I'm gonna give you another funny story. The, the biggest deer that David has ever seen in his life. Now David is retired and he's lived and worked here in this area his whole life. And he said the biggest deer he's ever seen in his life was across the street standing in the field. He said it looked like an elk. He said it was monstrous. So we'll see what happens this year. What are you finding over there? Are you rolling in dead worms? What are you finding over there that you're rolling in? You stink when you roll. Ugh. I am back home, obviously. It's late in the afternoon. Just ate dinner, tired. It was a long day out there. For you guys that are doing uh, anything seating wise, if you're doing a seating project, I wanna stress again, make sure you get the lawn guides. The calendars are up. We talk about seating there, but one thing that's really important is um, I would try and avoid during the seeding and germinating and early stages, avoid slow release fertilizers. Use a mild fast release like PGF Balance or Green Shocker, one of those two. Now tomorrow, if I have enough dirt booster, I'm gonna run out there tomorrow because uh, it's gonna germinate pretty fast and I'm gonna throw some dirt booster down so that I get some good mycorrhizal fungi in that soil. I've already done it once, but I'm gonna do it again. Let me show you real quick the germination on the putting green. And the reason why I'm showing you this is because this is a cool season grass. This is actually um, dwarf bent that we planted last week. So you can see that that's dwarf bent and I've actually cut it already once. So the other question that might come up is when should I start cutting my new grass? You basically, I cut it at the height that I want it. So when your grass starts to grow, if you want to keep it at two inches and it's at three, cut it down to two. Start cutting it, don't let it get out of control. Cut it as soon as it reaches above the height that you want. So I've already cut this. This was probably about three quarters of an inch and I want to keep it at three eighths about until it gets established. So I've already been out here and I'll probably cut it again tomorrow. But I'm just hand fertilizing um, with green chalker on this because this is a little bit high in phosphorus. So I don't want to really want to use the balance. So I'm just throwing out some green chalker on it. Anyways, long video, hope this has helped. Talk to you later, Doc.